Hi guys! Uh, we're going to be talking all about surfactants today, so if you know nothing about them, this should shed a little bit of light about it. Um, my name is Darrell. Thank you for joining my channel, OL Cosmetics. Um, I think this will be an informative little tidbit for you guys if you're into lotion making, soaps, um, hand washes, body washes, bubble bath, face washes, all that good stuff. Okay, so let's dive right in. Um, there are four main types of surfactants. Okay, so first we have our non-ionic surfactant. Okay, this means that it has no charge. Okay, um, things like polysorbate 80, okay, is a non-ionic surfactant. And I'm sure you're probably thinking, Darrell, that's not a surfactant. I don't get clean with that. It is a surfactant and it is used as a non-ionic surfactant to help solubilize like fragrance oils and stuff in some of our sp sprays or bubble bath or anything else like that. Um, emulsifying wax, NF, is a non-ionic surfactant. I know, I just blew your mind, right? Um, so there's lots of non-ionic surfactants out there that we use already all the time. Um, and it, again, it just means that they don't have a positive or negative charge on them. Um, they're, sorry, I'm reading from my notes, so I apologize. <laughs> Um, there are, the, uh, non-ionic surfactants are good foam enhancers when used with anionic surfactants and can help reduce irritation that may be caused by anionic surfactants. Um, cocoa glucoside is also a non-ionic surfactant and that's something you're probably a little bit more familiar with as far as being like a washing cleansing surfactant, not polysorbate 80. Um, but... Non-ionic surfactants can do a lot of things like solubilize and emulsify and can be a really, really gentle cleansing agent like cocoa glucoside. And these are usually the ones that are used in baby products because they're very gentle, very mild. They're also very expensive. So that's just something to keep in mind while you're formulating. Okay, so next we have the more common type and that's an anionic surfactant. Okay, uh, anionic surfactants have um, a negative charge. Okay, so an anionic surfactant has a negative charge. These are the ones you're used to, SLS, DLS, AOS 40, um, any of the lauryl sulfates. Um, what do I have? I have ah, sodium C14, C16, sulfonate 40% solution. So this is a great one. This is anionic. It's only 40% anionic, so it's a lot milder than like SLS would be. Um, I also have Plantapon, which is a great a green anionic surfactant. Um, it also goes by LGC Sore Blend. Um, and like I said, it's a green anionic surfactant, so that's always good to have. A little bit more milder than like an SLS. Um, Anionic surfactants are our main bubbly, lathery, foaming ingredients that we're all really used to and that we all love. Like, you know, you feel cleaner when things are all bubbly and foamy and rich. And even though you could use like a non-ionic baby body wash or something and you'll be just as clean, you don't feel as clean because you're not sudsing up. <laughs> you got to get the suds. So that's where we use our anionic surfactant is in getting those bubbles and those foam and those suds. Um, it is important though that you're aware that anionic surfactants can be more irritating to the skin. And that's why we should pair them with a non-ionic surfactant or an amphoteric surfactant. Ooh, what's an amphoteric surfactant? Amphoteric surfactants are really neat because they have both a positive and a negatively charged ion. Um, things like cocoa, mitopropyl betine, betine, betine. I'm sure I'm not saying any of these right, but I usually just call it cocoa betine. Um, 
This is amphoteric. It means it can go with positively charged things or negatively charged things. It can kind of go either way. Um, let's see. Amphoteric surfactants are less irritating than anionic surfactants. They can also help thicken up a formula and they make the bubbles smaller and feel creamier. Um, again, the drawbacks are that they're more, more expensive and they don't foam up as well as an anionic surfactant. So the main point here is find a good anionic surfactant that you like that's in line with your principles. Um, whether it's green, make sure it doesn't have any of the things you don't want in there, sulfides, parabens. Um, find one that you like, stick with it, and find uh, a couple good matches for it. Find uh, amphoteric surfactant to match up with your favorite anionic. Find a non-ionic to match up with your favorite anionic. Um, you know, and experiment with the percentages. Do you need that much anionic? All right, can you get a good enough foam with 20% anionic and 20% non-ionic? You gotta experiment. I don't know. <laughs> um, I know a lot of my recipes are at least half ionic and then the other half would be usually amphoteric like cocoa betaine or cocoa glu glucoside um, and that's just how I do it. So that's kind of your quick and dirty intro into the four types of surfactants. Again that's anionic, non-ionic, cationic, and amphoteric. Um, so it's just I sound really smart saying them. But that's good vocabulary for you guys to know. And it helps you while formulating. And if you get into the HLB system at all, um, it will be really important to know the different types of surfactants. And the HLB system is really complicated, um, very advanced way of doing lotion um, and practice to make a stabilized lotion. But again, that's way advanced. I don't even really get into the HLB system. Mm, yeah. But if you think you might, then definitely study your surfactants. All right, guys. So thanks for tuning in and hanging out. Uh, if you have some quick questions for me, comment below. If you like this video, give me a little comment. Was that helpful at all? Um, did you learn anything besides the four names of the surfactants? Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again.